There it is. Marking it. Okay, now I'm marking yeah, right. it. Welcome to another episode this week. So on this episode, I'll be doing like a standard amberjack dive. Nothing too crazy, except I ended up shooting a 100 pound amberjack in this video, which I've gotten three or four over 100 pounds, but for this close to land, close to um, you know where I live, it was a pretty um, cool surprise to find something like this. It ended up being 95 pounds gutted, and it had a legal red snapper in his stomach that was three or four pounds alone. So he was well over 100 pounds. Basically, I'd add another um, anywhere from, uh, I'd say, uh, like 6, 8 pounds to, on the higher end, like uh, 10 pounds or something like that. So he was a good bit over 100 pounds. Um, it was interesting because I didn't know how big the fish was when I shot it. It was around a bunch of 40 pounders and 50 pounders. So you know, you don't have much reference, especially on a dive like this. I'm diving um, a barge in the 200 feet that has been passed down through generations of my family. It's a pretty interesting spot, but there was no bottom fish at all. A giant school amberjacks came right in on me, so I started just shooting them. And the big amberjacks swam up with the rest of them, and I've, I knew he was a little bit bigger, but I had no idea until I pulled this fish up. You'll notice in the video I let him kind of tire himself out because I end up not getting a very good shot and basically with fish that big you kind of want them to work themselves so if you have a reel on your gun it's really important to just you know not like rush getting them in and in my case I use two guns so as long as I got one gun and I can keep you know jumping on the fish and knifing them and basically being able to reload it then and you see in this video I end up getting five amberjacks total so the second fish I shot was the hundred pounder but I just let him ride and I just watch you know my line management and everything watch for tangles and just let him beat himself up and then once I get the deco I just I can pull him up and use the compression to my advantage it's especially effective when free diving but with scuba especially this deep you really you can't just like fly back up and pull them a few and use the, you know, the bends or, you know, their air bladder against them like you can as easily. So in this case, I get the deco first and then I pull the fish in because then I can give the, I can, I can cause more damage by pulling them up to lesser depths compared to when I pull them up to me when I'm deeper at, at depth of them per se. So just in case while you're watching this, you're wondering why I'm fighting them this way. This is, um purposely the way I try to fight fish like this so um, and also I don't have to worry about sharks so much with let alone amberjacks but big amberjacks and if there's no like I'd say schools of bull sharks something that actually will take them out sometimes but if I don't see anything like that I can honestly let the fish work themselves for a long time so anyway hope you all enjoy the video Dropping down now to about 200, uh, 210 feet. There's the wreck coming in the view now. It's good visibility.
nothing on this end so far. See, it's an old fish trap right there. Nothing on this end either, so time to look up for pelagics. Spot the school of amberjacks right here. The first shot. Not a stone shot, but the commotion will keep him around more. The second shot. This was actually the 100 pounder. It's hard to tell. It barely even reacts to getting shot, if you notice. Well, the 100 pound ever jack is starting to react more to getting hit. It's starting to take off and shake. I try to work my way up to this one. So that way I have a gun to keep shooting with.
That's one down. Time they reload up again. Looking for the right target now. You'll notice the Almacos are towards the edge, which are the smaller species, usually at least. And then towards the center, the bigger amberjacks tend to hang out. Target sighted. Good bleed out shot. You see this 100 pounder over here? It's still pulling mine out of the reel a little bit, but slowly getting worn out.
Hammer Jack's finally getting weaker. Losing a lot of blood, as you can see. I get the right angle for the knife. Try to stab at different angles in order to collapse the skull. Once I stab it kind of in a circle or on each side, it kind of caves in on itself. Dispatches them much better. I mainly do that on this species though, because they're notorious for coming back to life. You need to really make sure you sever the connections. Notice I have the other gun with the other amberjack on my right arm. Trying to keep tension on the bigger amberjack while I spool this one back up. I don't want to lose them um, or gain depth here, more like. As long as I'm at the same depth or uh, ascending, not descending, that's kind of where I want to be. It's better for my um, nitrogen buildup. Kind of just go down and then shoot my way back up. This is kind of the angle I always try to take. Notice the amber jack aren't as apparent. I gotta keep the interest of the fish kinda so. It's the one way to keep the school on you. That's why sometimes when you shoot one and they go crazy, it's almost good in some ways because all that commotion makes the other ones chase them. With this species that is. There's a few more coming back in now. Shoot this one. See, it's pretty shocked still, so I take advantage of uh, trying to get a knife in him. Uh, 
down quickly, so I was able to take him down quickly too. It's always good. Loading back up again. <laughs> Trying to make some commotion. <laughs> They're getting smarter. And I'm starting to drift further away from the wreck, so. The big amber jack is far enough away where it doesn't really help me that much. He's got most of the line off the spool. So a couple are coming up here. I take this shot. Stone them.
guys sent now. Four AJs on me and one um, hundred pounder on the line still. Trying to drag that fish up without taking more line out of the reel. Once I get the deco depth, then I don't have to worry about time so much. Considering I still have enough air for my deco and everything. Gotta be careful rising up with this many fish on you though, especially amberjacks. They go from being super heavy to um, being super buoyant. And they can pull you right up to the surface if they get stuck on you and kill you pretty quickly with the bends. I actually had another 100-pounder um, before a shot for a tournament that was going on in Key West years ago that I shot in about 230 feet. And I was fighting him and stabbing him and just trying to take him out, and he ended up pulling me up to the surface. And luckily I, I stabbed him in the air bladder and pulled him right back down. And I got back down to deco depth, and I ended up being fine, but... Just had um, some close calls with that, so I try to get them off me before I even make it to that depth. Drop three of them. Now I got one dead one here and a hundred pounder still down there fighting. See how this one's coming back to life. It may seem dead sometimes, but even with dilated pupils, they'll come back. Very strange fish. work this amberjack here. Slowly making progress with this big fish. I don't know how well the shaft's in them, so slowly pulling it up. Every time a pelagic or any bigger fish for that matter takes off, 
Try to let them take a little bit of line, unless they're nearby a structure. That way, I rip um, the skin less, just in case it's not hanging on very well. Starting to see color now. Fish is pretty worn out. It's been fighting basically the whole dive. Exactly what I was hoping for. As the compression hits the fish, they'll start to react more though. It's kind of their um, death spiral, you could say. On a good note, you can see the spear shaft went through both sides. So it's not even the barb that's holding the fish at this point. It's basically wrapped up in it. He's not really going anywhere. Just gotta, just gotta wait for the right angle here. Get the knife on. This is where I'm starting to realize it's a bigger one for sure. Can't really get the knife through the skull very well.
good sized fish for sure. Again, I don't get too many in this area that size. Some 70s, but first time getting one about that big for this region. You can see the one that I stoned wasn't very dead. This is why I jump on them with the knife the way I do and collapse the skull. They're like zombies. <laughs> you really gotta do some damage. This one actually ripped the end of my gaff off. I found out later. A cheap gaff, yeah, but still pretty wild. Hey, do not put the boat in gear, all right? Don't put the boat in gear. There's lines everywhere. All right. Not all the fish are in the boat. I can continue my deco.
Every one of them is over 40, huh? And that's a wrap. Not a bad fish at all. Decent dive too. Thanks for watching. Should have some more edits for y'all soon. I got a trip to Mexico I'm working on right now. Uh, I went there for um, six days of diving. Should have a video for each day. It's uh, all free diving. Um, mixed of snappers, grouper, a couple of different things, a couple of different areas. So hope you all enjoy. Thanks for watching.